And now the veil is thrown back and we can see the Princess of Wales. And as they come to Her Majesty the Queen, they will turn, Prince of Wales will bow, Princess of Wales will curtsy. And so, honor done to Her Majesty, they begin the long walk to the great west door and the great welcome that awaits them outside. The music is Pomp and Circumstance number no. four in G by Sir Edward Elgar, played by the musicians of three orchestras of which the Prince of Wales is patron. The orchestra of the Royal Opera House Covent Garden, the English Chamber Orchestra, the Philomonia Orchestra, conducted now by Sir Colin Davis, music director of the Royal Opera. We see the pages in the naval uniforms of 1863, naval uniform of 1981, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward in morning dress, and Lady Sarah Armstrong Jones, who's coped so wonderfully with that magnificent train. as I said, Clemmy Hambro and Kathy Cameron, looking absolutely delightful. Sarah Jane Gaisley is there and India Hicks as well. A cap holder appears with cap and gloves. The bride now has her wonderful bouquet of flowers again. And when they arrive at the west door, what a welcome there will be, because outside we have heard all during the wedding ceremony, the almost medieval cheers, every time a vow was taken, every time a blessing was pronounced, the cheers rang out and came to us through the stout walls of this old cathedral church. Listen to this welcome. McQuarrie, Lieutenant Colonel John Miller, who knows a great deal about carriages and horses, perhaps not so much about the bride's train, but certainly Lady Sarah does. She bundles it in in expert fashion. India Hicks, the granddaughter of Earl Mountbatten, honorary grandfather, as uh, Prince Charles called him, and the bells of St Paul's ring out. Castilian riders in their ascot liveries, the footmen in their state liveries. The royal family come from the west door, the Duke of Northumberland there, the Lord Steward with the wand of office.
And this is where people have been sleeping on the pavements, staking their claims since early Monday afternoon. Well, they've been rewarded now. The Duke of Gloucester there behind, like Aunt Linley. The whole family clustering on the steps of St Paul's to wave the couple off on their way back to Buckingham Palace. Queen Mother, who looked a great deal at the young couple during the service, wishing them well, I'm sure, because she knows the feeling to ride to church as a commoner and come back as a royal lady. And so London now sees for the first time their royal highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales, as they move off from the forecourt of St Paul's, past the statue of Queen Anne, to Ludgate Hill. by the royal family and the Lord Mayor. And you see that uh, horseshoe in the Bastillian carriage that takes them home. Princess Margaret, Princess Alice, Duchess of Gloucester, Mrs. Shanky, the bride's mother, Captain Mark Phillips. His wedding day was Perhaps the last great such royal occasion that London has seen. But there's been nothing to equal this. The marriage of the heir to the throne. And there's the horseshoe and the little poses of flowers put there, I'm sure, by the loyal members of the royal news. And a long ordeal over for Earl Spencer. Princess of Wales said that her mother must uh, feel very proud to have got rid of three daughters in as many years. this wedding, not alone, but with other people. I'm sure that's why they've come out and slept along the roadside, because they wanted somebody to turn to and say, oh, isn't she lovely? And so down across Ludgate Circus, they watched them go. And shortly, the poor family will move into the carriages of their procession and at a discreet distance trot after the procession of the bride and bridegroom. The bells ringing across the rooftops of the city of London. And the step liners, when Prince Charles knew that they were going to be dismissed to wait there, falling in again after the service, he said that they must all come in, and they all stood inside the church to see the wedding service. What a nice and kind and warm thought. Cheers and more cheers. Hooters and horns and rattles and bells. Hey! I've never in all my long years of watching royal occasions known such a happy occasion as this, when the crowd has been so warm, so good-natured. Reminds one, perhaps, of the Queen's own Silver Duke. Spencer is helped down 